Autodesk Vehicle Tracking is one of the components of the Architecture, Engineering, and Construction Collection. This application functions inside of Autodesk's AutoCAD Civil 3D, Map 3D, and AutoCAD itself. Autodesk Vehicle Tracking has three main areas of capability. The first is in devising and analyzing swept paths for many different types of vehicles. The second is an intuitive parking lot design. And the third is the capability to add roundabouts to your engineering model. And once these roundabouts have been placed in the model, you can manipulate them by changing the design and, and analyzing the consequences of those design changes. Within Civil 3D, swept paths and roundabouts fit seamlessly within the corridor models, and you can actually see the the vehicles driving along the corridors you've created and the roundabouts forming part of the corridors as well. Let's take a closer look at these three capabilities. We'll start with the swept path capabilities of Autodesk vehicle tracking. See I have a street here with a, a left turn into a, a second street. I can choose how I'd like to drive the vehicle. I'm going to use the auto drive arc. I get a very extensive vehicle library with vehicles from all over the world, all different types of vehicles. You can use these standards or you can create your own. I'll use this single unit truck, position my vehicle in the initial starting point, pick my next point. When I do that, I get a position vehicle dialog that allows me to set some uh, other options, but I'm just going to proceed with placing the vehicle. And as you see, as I, as I move the vehicle along here, the path gets generated. And as I go around the corner, there is the final vehicle path. You can see the uh, traces of the wheels in red and the body outline in green. Let me just add the vehicle in here see what is actually happening. See there's the, the trace of the vehicle. The path can be manipulated very easily by adjusting grips. These are intelligent grips. I can add another point in here by just picking that and you'll see what happens if I move this off of uh, or move the path beyond what the turning radius of the truck has been defined as the path stops at that point. So as I adjust this back again, you'll see that the path then picks up and becomes more active. If I have geometry in the drawing that I would like the vehicle to follow, for instance, in this case, I have a, a roadway down here. I want to get my truck to back into this loading bay. This is very uh, easily accomplished in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking, so let's go and, and just start my drive again. I'll use this smaller truck in this case. That will be fine. Place my vehicle. Place the second point. Now I'm just going to pick an alignment using the pick alignment button. And I'm just going to pick this polyline right here. You can see that as I follow that, it, it follows the direction of the alignment. So I'll position it there. And then I'll pick another alignment. In this case, this line that forms this curb edge. It's going to bring me right in to that situation. I'll back up to here. And then I'll pick the alignment that I want to follow, which is this edge here. And you can see that I can just move this right in where I want it to go. So how did we do? Well, we got around the corners not too badly. There's some adjustment. But very quickly, we were able to put that vehicle path in back into the loading bay, see exactly what the geometries are. We can animate this now to see what this would look like in, in a, a real world situation and also to see what the driver would see as he drives along this path or he or she drives along this path. So we'll just animate it using the animate button. 
so I have some camera options here. I can set the uh, camera positioning in here. I can also set the camera tracking path to be the, the truck following the driver's eye, or I can fix the camera position. I'll use the truck at the moment. We'll switch. And there goes the, uh, the truck down the road. We'll switch to the uh, driver's view in just a minute. I'm going to grab the slider on the animation and just move it a little bit more quickly. You can see we're getting ready for the turn. There we go around the turn. Got the trees getting in the way here. And let's change this now to the driver's eye path. So here's what the driver's seeing as he's going along or she's going along. I'll turn on the mirror view when reversing. Here's the truck backing up. And again, I'll kind of hasten this video along a little bit. And there's the truck backing into the loading bay. So you can check the clearances for things like curb lines and, and all that sort of thing and get a very realistic view of what's actually happening as the truck is proceeding down the path. Up until now, we've been looking at tracking paths that work with just straight CAD line work in our drawings. In this case, we've got an actual civil 3D corridor and we've got a vehicle tracking path that represents a low boy. Let me just go in here and get a profile view of this. I'll select the path. Place the profile in there. And as you can see, there's not really much ground clearance on this low boy trailer at all. So the question is, as we drive along the road, are we going to have enough clearance? And with Autodesk vehicle tracking, we can very easily find that out. If I just take a look at the way the truck is actually going to move, you'll see that as I go along here, the trailer spans the crown of the road where I've got wheels on, on both low edges of the road, but the trailer, the low part of the trailer is, is on the crown. So let's see if, if we're going to be able to actually clear that crown with the, the road cross falls set the way they are. All we need to do with that is to create a ground clearance report, clear a conflict report. We'll just select the path. Yes, I want to proceed with these values. It's creating the profile. And you can see in here what's happened is that I have some coloration which shows me exactly where things clear the road, where things are actually in conflict in that yellow area. And if I just kind of hover over that, you'll see that I also have points selected by the application that show me where this very low clearance actually is. And I've got less than 0.03 of a meter here in, in uh, some situations along this part of the crown. So you can see very quickly as you drive along what your ground clearance is going to be. And this works not only for uh, the ground itself, but if you were to go through bridges or tunnels with the top clearance of the vehicle as well, you'd get a, a report uh, detailing all of those difficulties if uh, the truck or, or vehicle were too high. Now we'll look at adding a parking lot in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. I'll go to the uh, new row, select the parking standard that I want. I've got one that I've customized here for a lighter background. I'll use that one. And I'll just select my start points and go around the, uh, the lot that I want to lay out. So there are the uh, initial layout. Now I'm going to do some of these uh, corners. Using these intelligent grips, I can just use this in combination with my object snaps. Set that in. And you'll notice as I do that, the parking lot stalls adjust and everything sets um, exactly the way that uh, the standards would uh, have it defined. 
I'm going to add uh, just a, a couple of more rows in here. I'm not going to, to do a whole lot. So I'll add a, a new row up here. I'll use the same, same standards. And there we've got a, a second row added just very quickly. The end treatments here for the islands, I can just go and, and move these along. And you can see as I do that, the parking lot stalls adjust again dynamically. If I wanted to add a third set of, of stalls in here, I could go to the uh, parallel row, just add a, a parallel. Let's pick that. There's the parallel row, and there it is added exactly the way that uh, I would like with the spacings and everything else. And then I can just fix the end treatments down here for the island. I can move that back in there and set those. So there's a. a a basic parking lot layout. I haven't done the whole lot as you can see, but um, pretty simple to do, very quick, very intuitive. Let's say I want to uh, edit some of these stalls. I would like to make some disabled stalls in here. I can use the editor, choose the row that I want to edit the stall in, select the stall that I want to edit, change the style from a normal to disabled style, Click the Copy To button and then just go and copy it to the other stalls that I want to, uh, to modify. Click Escape. And you can see everything has been updated dynamically. All of the sizings have been changed and so on. So how many stalls do we actually have in this parking lot? Well, we'll go up and, and do a uh, parking report. And there we go. We've got 129 stalls in total laid out at the moment. 123 of them normal, six of them disabled. I can export this if I like. And that's a, a quick overview of the uh, of the parking lot design. Very intuitive, very straightforward, very easy to, uh, to use and to lay out uh, parking lot area designs. The roundabout tools in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking allow you to very easily create a roundabout in just a few clicks. Select the Add Roundabout button. Select the roundabout type that you would like. Name the roundabout. Set your circle, apron width, center island diameter, screen colors. Place the island, and then add the approach roads. Within a very short time, you've created the roundabout and all of its approaches. Once the roundabout has been placed, you can see there are a number of intelligent grips. I can move these around. And as I do that, I get both graphic and numerical feedback from the dynamic model. I can easily add features such as crosswalks. As I place the crosswalk in here, you'll see that signage follows along with it. So I place the crosswalk there. There it is, and you can see that it's, it's also added the appropriate signage and moved the roundabout sign back to give me better visibility for that. All of this is taken care of dynamically. I can use the Edit Roundabout command to edit individual parts of the roundabout or to create a corridor from this roundabout. So let's go and create a corridor. As you can see, I can add any of the different components or modify the components dynamically using this editing feature. We'll go down to the corridor. I will create my alignments. Use the sample road assembly. And we're ready to go. We'll just rebuild that.
And there is the roundabout, built as a corridor inside of Civil 3D. Once the corridor has been created on the roundabout, you can use Civil 3D's capabilities in the corridor properties for that roundabout to create surfaces and to bound those surfaces. So here you'll see we've created a top surface and set a boundary around that top surface for the roundabout. And if I look at that in the object viewer, you can see what the result is. And there we have the top pavement surface for our roundabout corridor. With a corridor surface now in place, we can use our swept path capabilities inside Autodesk Vehicle Tracking to actually see what vehicles will do as they drive around this roundabout, and how they'll respond to the roundabout geometries. this single truck. I'll position it on the roundabout. You can see it knows what lane I'm in. The only other thing I have to do is pick the end point of where my travel is going to be and the vehicle path is made all the way around the roundabout in the right, uh, in the right direction. And finally, we'll just animate our vehicle path so you can see what the travel around the roundabout corridor looks like. And you can see the truck. And we'll just set the truck in motion. Notice all the signage and uh, other appropriate markings are, are on the roundabout, and you can see the corridor surface as well as the corridor construction underneath. So as the, uh, as the truck drives around here, uh, just to kind of finish this up, you can see how well integrated Autodesk Vehicle Tracking is with the, the Civil 3D environment, with the AutoCAD environment in general. And this allows you to take advantage of all of your designs in a much more fluid and dynamic manner. It's a very intuitive program to use and very fast and powerful. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this presentation and this concludes this uh, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking video. Thank you.